Hi, friends. Welcome to another Fude Beauty video. This was a loose collaboration where I suggested to the team that why don't I go over the brush brands that I covered throughout 2022. They were very nice to send me these brushes and point out my favorites from these different brands. I'm also an affiliate with Fude Beauty and I just wanted to thank you everyone for using my links throughout the year. I very much appreciate the gesture and even if you don't purchase brushes from me, I appreciate you watching this video and I am grateful for the opportunity to work with the brand as it allowed me to encounter a lot of different Fude brands that I did not hear of, that I did not know of, and then having to learn about the different brush types, handles, wood, just brush designs for different makeup application techniques widened my knowledge spectrum and definitely made me more enthusiastic over the year for Fude. So why don't we start with the first brand that I covered that was new to me for 2022, and that is Ehoro. What stand out for me, and I'll show you a few because Within the Ehoro brand, there are different subcategories of brushes, but the WP series with the pearl handles, you have the pearl handles with the gold ferrule, and there are an array of brushes here. I believe this is Canadian Squirrel, this is Sokoho Goat. You know I love my shader types, and this one in particular is lovely because the bristle length is quite long, so this will be more appropriate for a softer shadow texture where you could place it on the lid, but then turn the brush on its side to sweep through the crease. This wouldn't be great for a powder formula that's tightly packed into the pan, like those tighter metallic formulas. I'm thinking more so suku or even the texture found in the makeup by mario ethereal eyes palette what i absolutely love however is the wps4 now we've seen this type of blender before this is your standard crease blender right but its appeal for me is its short handle the gold ferrule i believe this is sokoho go if not sokoho sokoho but it's so soft and direct and the dome is just enough where it can fit well into the crease for several eye shapes and sizes right because i understand if you have a smaller eye size you might need a blender that's smaller than the s4 to get more direct there but for medium size eyes perfect for bigger size eyes i think great too you'll just get more of a cleaner crease application here and you can also whip it around the edges of your blend to get more of a blurring effect there. It's not too stiff, not too soft, which I think makes it versatile for several makeup users. And the shorter handle, for some reason, from my experience, especially when applying makeup on yourself, allows the user to feel a little more control, a little more confidence there because you are closer to your face. So you have a more direct approach to how you apply the makeup. And I think it makes one more comfortable in that way whereas something that's just longer you're not as close and you might not feel that same feedback like you would from a brush that has a shorter handle and the design again with the pearl finish i know it's tough to see on camera but there is a pearl finish on the handle the shorter size overall i think it makes it incredibly practical for travel and the fact that you don't have to pack so many brushes right you can then just pack the shader brush to have that lay down task and then you have your blender and maybe a smaller pencil brush which I'm sure Ehoro has in their lineup in the WP series. Also I wanted to showcase the RE series 18 to cheek brush again we have a short handle long ferrule this is all gray squirrel now with gray squirrel and i immediately think of chico Horo z series because that was my first introduction to gray squirrel 
was the Z series. A lot of those cheek brushes I feel are just so lightweight and fluid that I think ideal for more air light applications. If people are like struggling with blush, for example, they end up looking too blushed up on the center of the face. Gray Squirrel won't pick up as much as let's say goat hair, right? So it's a lot more of a conservative lay down. Sometimes I feel, however, that Gray Squirrel bundles are so soft, it might not feel like you're getting the same blend from a goat hairbrush. And this is why I like the bundle here in the Ehoto RE series brush. It has a little more feedback. It's small, so it's perfect for the hollows of your cheeks. You could get around here on the center of your cheeks and it's still very soft. You can still have that conservative lay down of color, but I think you're gonna get a much nicer blend also. So you have best of both worlds, which I think fantastic, especially for Gray Squirrel. You get that light pickup, but now because of how many bristles are in in the 18-2. You can also expect a really nice blend as well. Up next, we had the Chikohoro Silver Fox Series extension. Additional four brushes to be added to the entire line. This one I just showed was the F09, huge, huge powder brush. Luxurious feeling, plush on the skin, Great for finishing. If you want that enveloped sun-kissed application, F09 will be perfect for that application. However, practically speaking, unless it's in your budget, if you have it, if you have the money to share, you don't need a brush this huge for really nice bronzer, highlighter, or blush application, right? If you had the F04 or even the F03, these two, are great, right? They're smaller, but still feel great on the skin. It's not like you're dealing with another bristle type here. You still have the Silver Fox F04, a little more direct in that application. It feels a little more dense. And with the slant here, I feel perfect for the hollows as well as the apples of the cheeks. And you have a little more movement here from the F03, right? Perhaps more versatile with its shape. It's slightly pinched and flat round instead of slanted. Yeah, so that really all depends on your preference. But compared to the F09, right, F09 is huge compared to these two, right? But again, you don't necessarily need this huge brush. Perhaps I'm coming from a standpoint of a makeup wearer who has abandoned applying loose powder. I actually have not for a very long time. And being in the winter season where my skin condition does lean a little more dry, I primarily apply loose powder under my eyes to set my concealer for the rest of my face because I have the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation on right now, which I feel sets beautifully on its own. So I don't feel the need to apply loose powder, but I understand for one that does, and heavily relies on that step in their makeup routine where the F09 I mean forget it you're gonna get loose powder on your face in a jiffy so I understand if that is a necessary step for you and you need that super ultra plush brush to take care of that, right? Also great for sensitive skin. If you want a little more pickup than a gray squirrel but you need for it to feel softer than goat perfect combination. That was kind of going over the comparisons, but I think what the highlight for me out of this extension, definitely the F10, the fingertip brush. Perhaps you can see it here on camera. You have the slant here and the shoulder bristles closer to the ferrule, then they get longer. So this slant here, different from what you get from the Ehoto brush, right? Much softer. It's not going to pick up those tighter textures in the pan. I remembered in my original video that I demoed F010 with the Artist Couture thing was Mauve Supremes. That palette didn't get great reviews because the metallic sparkler shades in there were a little dry and tight in the pan. But this brush picked those textures up beautifully. And again, is great where you could rub the brush back and forth, but because of the bristles being bundled in this way, it's going to pick up more than if it was completely flat. And then when placing that shadow on your lid, it just gets it on there quickly. The softness of the tip, you can then 
pull carefully through your crease just to finish the edges slightly of that metallic shade. And then if you want to go in with another brush to pull in a, a matte shade or another shade through your crease, you can. But I think the F10 was the favorite amongst the four brush extension for the Silver Fox series in Chikohoto. The other two were the F08 and the F07. Great for inner corner, lower lash line, more precise crease work, and then the F08 for that line smudge, okay? I failed to mention this when covering Ehoro, my apologies. Their brush covers are fantastic. This is great for travel. And look how luxurious this is. The felt fabric is soft on the bristles. You could use this with any brush. It doesn't have to be with an Ehoro brush. I have a bigger brush cover here. Let's say I wanted to use it on my Chikohoro brush. A little smaller. Just pull it through the handle side. Look at that. Come on, come on. Beautifully designed. My apologies for not covering the brush covers when speaking about the Ehoro brushes, but again, you could use them with any brush. And if you have a small collection of brushes you like to bring along for the ride, like your set picks for travel, you don't even put any thought to it. You have those brushes on the side for where you need to go somewhere, they're ready to be packed. If you don't like just putting the brush in those slots, or if you do, you can still put the brush cover on for extra protection. <laughs> if you're just putting brushes in a bag, I highly recommend that you don't just put your brush free like this in a bag because that's how the bristles become misshapen. You know, you gotta protect these babies. They're very expensive, premium grade hair. You wanna make sure they last as long as possible and a part of those efforts include making sure the brush head itself is well protected. So if you don't have a designated brush holder, I get it. If you have to put the brush in the bag, perhaps try to put a cover on it. If it's not this cover, one of those neck covers to work really well because that will protect the bristles and ensure when you arrive at your destination, the brush will be intact. It won't have weird dents in there. And lastly, what perhaps was the most luxurious gift I have ever received from Fude Beauty and from Bishuro is the Grand Series. Each brush comes in this velour box and here you have one of the cheek brushes. Yes, I did use these brushes, but I put them back in their uh, sleeve, in their boxes, because my gosh, I felt so guilty using them. I know that's ridiculous. This was a special release for Bishoto because it was the first time that they used Gray Squirrel with their brushes, but I have to show you the GB01 blender. This is Gray Squirrel as well but I love the feedback in this brush. It has a little more mm, than let's say the Chikohoro Z series is the, the Z11. I feel like it's a Z11. That one is gray squirrel as well. Super ultra fluffy, but this one has a little more of a pronounced tip to the shape where I feel that gets in really nice into the crease. And despite its brush head size, if you have smaller eyes, fantastic, right? Because the Z11, I hope that's what it is, I insist on keeping going the Z11, has a more dome shape to the top, so it'll cover a wider surface area than let's say this one would. If you have smaller eyes, that might be great if you were to finish a, a blend, but if you wanted to get the color here right into the crease, the point makes that possible. Possible, very easy. Advantages to using a gray squirrel eye brush is that it's soft, it slides against the skin. It doesn't bring the skin along for the ride, which is what people I think are now realizing. The difference between a Japanese made brush and a brush that's made elsewhere, I guess. The tips are intact, they're not cut. The shape is determined by how the bristles are bundled. Because of that, that very pointed tip that's left intact will slide across the skin versus a blunt tip. And I think those who undergo eye sensitivity issues or they feel they're blending, no matter what shadow they use, what have you, it always ends up looking muddy, skipped, uneven on the lids. The gray squirrel won't pick up as much as goat, However, I think great to use if you are a beginner with eyeshadow because that gives you the control 
with how much eyeshadow you can apply at a time. If you want more, then put on more, but at least it's soft enough so you can have that soft to fuse blend through the crease and it looks professional. It was hard for me to pick out my favorites from the Grand series. That was one eyeshadow brush, but my favorite cheek brush, hold on. This is the Highlight Brush 01. Now, while I understand it might not be as practical as other brush sizes, but hear me out on this, fantastic for under eye setting. Are you kidding me? The arrowhead shape, I think, was the element that drew me into this shape out of the entire collection. I don't have a lot of arrowhead shaped brushes in my Fude lineup, and to have this, I feel, especially in this brush head size, under the eyes, down the bridge of the nose. Listen, if you just wanted that soft serving of contour powder, you could whip it right here and then take it for a ride. Because again, if the gray squirrel is ultra silky on the skin, and I think we'll have a nice blend at thereafter. This is, however, ideal for highlight. And why don't I just demonstrate that here? because of the smaller brush head, you just intuitively know where to place the highlighter. It's not gonna run away from you because the brush is small enough for that control. Yes, and like you had seen, fantastic for the cheekbones. Wonderful for the bridge of the nose. I haven't placed highlighter there in quite some time nor have I there either. <laughs> Cupid's bow, yes. So although it is labeled as a highlighter brush, like I said, under eyes, or dare I say, if you have bigger eyes, you can use this for a final blend right here near the brow arch if you had wanted. If I were to suggest, however, a cheek brush from the lineup, the highlight cheek brush, this is the GHC01. My apologies because I had the cover over it. This is a round, feral, tapered brush. Fantastic for all your cheek tasks, okay? Hollows, apples, even highlighter, and all over finishing. There is a jumbo finishing brush in this collection. Listen, like I mentioned with the Chikohoro F09, fantastic to have, but not necessary, right? If you want to not even finish your makeup, if you don't know what that is, if you feel it's not necessary, you don't need the Big Mama brush, but if you love to finish, if you love to apply loose powder and it not look like powder on your skin, virtually undetectable, then yes. Hold on, perhaps take a look at the GF01. I don't, again, I don't have to say much about a Fude finishing brush, especially when it comes in gray squirrel. In this size, which I think quite moderate, there are bigger finishing brushes in, uh, or I should say on the Fude site. This I think is a moderate size. That's wonderful for many face sizes and shapes. Again, not necessary, but I think what you could get away with with this brush more so than the F09, for instance. Where Where is it? Where are you, F09? The F09 is much bigger, which I think it could be limiting in that way. If you look at them head on, even if this is fluffed out a little more, it's still smaller, which means you can use this for blush, maybe not as precise as a smaller brush like the one I just showed from the Grand Series line, but you could definitely make it happen. Maybe you're a, a one blush moment person where you don't even use bronzer. You use like a color like Paradise Venus, Starla, whip it into the hollows mostly and the leftover applied on the cheeks, you're done. Wipe that carefully on a tissue or microfiber towel, finish everything you've applied. This is the most expensive brush in the Grand Series from Bichero. However, if you've been saving and really want a finishing brush, that one is fantastic. So that is it, fam. Those were the standout brands that I covered for 2022 and the brushes that Fude Beauty sent to me. There are a ton of brushes on the site and a lot of favorites overall. But I, again, I just wanted to showcase the ones that I introduced you to throughout the year and wanted to present my favorites from those collections. Again, a huge thank you to you, fam, for your support, for watching, for using my links. Again, to Fude Beauty for their generosity and the opportunity 
opportunity to create with them is always a pleasure. Looking forward for the new year. We're already talking about new brands and collaborations that are coming up on the site. So hopefully you're around to see those. And let me know down below what your favorite purchases from Food Aid Beauty were this year, if you made any, what you have your eye on. I would love to know. I'll see you down in those comments, fam. And until then, that is... A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Fude Beauty Extravaganza. Or my favorite cheek brushes from all the brands. Stay tuned for that one. Take care and I will see you again soon.